guys in today's video we're going to talk about dry eye specifically evaporative dry eye if you don't know the difference in types of dry eye you can see my other video at the link above go ahead and jump in the ride here we go eyes on the road Dr. Keith Poindexter, welcome again to Eyes on the Road. Today we're talking about evaporative dry eye. If you watch my other video at the link above, you know that dry eye is broken down into two types, evaporative as well as aqueous deficient. The evaporative dry eye type is usually due to dysfunction of the meibomian glands. These are glands on your eyelid that produce oil to mix with your tears. There are many ways we can treat those oil glands. The first is simply with heat. And one of the ways I like to do this for my patients is with something called a brooder, that's B-R-U-D-E-R, -E mask. This is basically a sleep mask that you can heat in the microwave and then apply and leave on your closed eyes for at least 10 minutes. What happens is the heat helps to melt the oil in those glands so that the glands can flow a little bit better. Very similarly to when you light a wick on a candle. The candle will take that hard wax and turn it into more liquid so that it can flow easier. Another way we can treat meibomian gland dysfunction is with omega-3s and that's either omega-3 in your diet things like fish and nuts and or an omega-3 supplement. Omega-3s are good for a lot of things. This includes joints. It also includes heart health because it lowers your bad cholesterol as well as thins your blood so it makes stroke and heart attack less likely. It's good for our complexion and there's even some argument that it may be good for neurologic function in our later years. Yet another treatment for meibomian gland dysfunction is oral antibiotics. Just like acne is an oil gland dysfunction which can be treated with oral medication, we can do the same for these eyelids. Typically the oral medications we consider are either minocycline or doxycycline as well as azithromycin. We also treat meibomian gland dysfunction with topical medication that sometimes can include anti-inflammatory drops as well as azithromycin drops. One of the downsides however to the azithromycin drops is that they can be quite expensive. The symptoms of evaporative dry eye can be treated with artificial tears as well. Certainly the quality of the artificial tear that you use is important and I'll come out with a video shortly about the differences in types of artificial tears. But if you're using a tear for meibomian gland dysfunction, you need to ask your eye care provider if it's designed for that specific type of dry eye. A final treatment we can use for recalcitrant meibomian gland dysfunction is a surgical procedure. There are many different types of surgical procedures, but the one, at least in my opinion, that I think is most effective is called lipoflow. This is where we heat those oil glands in office while at the same time we express those oil glands, basically squeeze the stagnated debris out of the glands. The importance of treating meibomian gland dysfunction early and aggressively is because if you allow the oil to become stagnant within the oil glands, eventually the oil glands will atrophy and die. And unfortunately, if the gland is dead, there's no reviving it. And if you lose enough of these oil glands, that can become a significant issue in terms of symptomology as well as visual quality. If this video has been helpful and you've enjoyed it and would like to find out more about dry eye disease or other eye issues and or eye care products, 
feel free to subscribe to my channel. And until next time, remember, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change.